Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make this block wagon. Okay. And you have the option with the kit to either order it with acrylic or order it with wooden blocks. It comes with over a hundred blocks of whichever one you decide to choose. The acrylic ones are nice because they're made out of cast acrylic and you don't have to paint them. So you get four colors in there. And then the wood ones are nice because they replicate the old school blocks. Okay, so the very first thing that you need to do is you need to take your kit and it's going to come where the entire kit looks um, of MDF. So where this is black, it's going to look like this one here. It's not going to look black. I did this and I'm going to show you how I did it. I took the shortcut out and I'm using a black Sharpie. And you'll need to clean up your edges from the laser mark. But basically, this is a very, very thick Sharpie. And I just go ahead and color it like that. It's so much easier than painting it, and it works great. You can give it one coat or two or whatever you want, but give it time to dry. And it's ink, so it stains the wood. Much like, um, like, a wood stain would do okay so I've got mine already I'm gonna put the engraving of the website on the bottom of it and then I'm going to turn everything back over the way that I want it to be laid inside here let me move it up so you guys can see it a little bit the penny is just there to show you size now this is 112 and you should have a handle four wheels and you should have two of these little blocks that look like C's. And then you should have two little helper tools that look also like C's or like a Pac-Man or whatever. Okay, now go ahead and take some crazy glue. And you're going to apply it right here. And across this just a teeny bit. Now this one, you're gonna slide with the black side facing in. And then if you have the helper tool that is from the helper tool set, then this is where you should be using this to make sure you're keeping this straight up and down. And it should be even when you get done. Try not to get crazy glue on it. But it should be at the bottom of it and then it should be parallel like that. That way you can assure that that's straight. Now you want to go ahead and do the same thing here. Put a little bit of crazy glue. And just a dot of glue right there and you can apply this with a toothpick because it can get messy again I'm gonna put the black on the inside and I painted the bottom of mine black as well because I want it black on there and then you want to push that in there like that so it kind of should look sort of like a little bed now at this point you can use this piece to square it up just kind of hold it together. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of glue. And the crazy glue sticks pretty fast, so if you're not real sure about yourself, then go ahead and use some wood glue. Because the wood glue will give you some time to work. And then just turn it upside down and then hold it in place until it sets up. It should look like that. Repeat that process here.
and then hold it there until it sets up. Now I'm sitting it on here and I'm pushing it straight down so everything is even at the top while I'm doing it. Okay, at that point we're gonna let that set up and then we're gonna take our handle, which looks like this, it's completely square at the end. And you wanna kind of round that just a little bit, go back and forth on a thin piece of sandpaper just a couple of times to round that corner. Turn it over and you're gonna do the same thing on that side. And you can drag it like this if you don't think you got it even or if you wanna get more of a round corner to it. But it should just kind of look like it's going into a V, but don't take too much off because otherwise you won't be able to glue it properly. At this point, you probably should use a little bit of a toothpick because this is a little bit more dainty. So I've got an extra little piece of plastic here that I'm just going to put some on. And you want to put it right gently right in this. and then straight across the back. And then you wanna take your piece here that you have that looks like that C, and you wanna push that straight up against there and hold it there until it dries. Make sure that's fully dry before we do the next step. So we're gonna leave that set like that. In the meantime, we're gonna work on our wheels. Now, I like to use the three-in-one multi-cut tool, but you can use whatever you have. You wanna cut your toothpicks. These are fancy toothpicks, so they have like a little piece of there. And then you wanna have a flat end. You wanna dip them in a rolling manner like that. Make sure it's not too much on there. And then you want to dip them into the wheel. You want to hold that wheel flat with the surface and let that set up. Repeat that process for the other wheel. That one might not have had enough or it's a skinnier toothpick. Oops, okay, the glue will set up and hold it, but I'm gonna leave that one stand up. Okay, now that's gotta set up for a second, so I'm gonna pause you and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's dry now. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this through here, and as you can see, it's touching, right? Well, we don't wanna have it touching because then our wheel is gonna constantly rub against this when we go to move it. So that's where this little helper tool here comes in handy. You push that and you hold it against there like that. Now you wanna go ahead and mark this. You can use your scissors, you can use a pen, pencil, whatever you want to mark it. I'm just going to take this and just put a little nick in it like that. I don't wanna do it all the way because I don't wanna lose the circle of the wood. Then I'm going to just cut it right there, just like that. Now, if you're really good about it, you don't have to do that twice. You can kind of just eyeball it up and do the same thing like that. And then you've got both of them the same size. But if you're not, and you're not entirely comfortable with that, you just go ahead and put that in there and put that one in there and use your little helper tool here and the second little helper tool you have, you would just put right there. And then you could mark it and cut it off. And you can also see if you're even, which I can see, oops, I did not eye it up 100%. So this one I'm gonna sand down just a tiny bit. See how it's just a slightly bit over, just slightly. So that's easy fix. 
do that and then check it again to see if it's exactly the same. There's one and two. So it's a little bit more. I'll take a tiny bit more off and then I'll be comfortable with it being the same. And I'm just going over it lightly. Now that they're both on there, at this point, we need to glue our wheels on the other side. So again, you want to use your little toothpick at this point because you don't want to glue the wheel to this piece here. So just do a tiny bit, enough to go around that circle. And then you can kind of put a dab right in the middle and just go around the circle in there. If you're careful, you won't get it to come out. And by doing that, you should have just enough to where it's just slightly. See how it just moves just slightly? That's what you want. That one, you see I went over just a little bit, so you want to wipe that off so you don't end up gluing your wheel to your base. And then there you have it. Both wheels, and they are fully functional. Now, I like to keep this sitting up like this, just to assure that that definitely doesn't touch for a minute. And I usually use my little spacer tool or the little seeds spacers that I have here like the extra one you can put that under there too and just let it sit there for a minute so that that can cure and because you used crazy glue if you did use crazy glue it shouldn't take but a second and I'm using the Loctite liquid super glue I love this glue because it sets up really really great but I hate the way that they redid this lid and if anybody from Loctite is watching they need to fix that because that's like an irritating problem all right, so let that sit there. In the meantime, you wanna verify that your handle is going to work. So you can kinda of just stick it in there and make sure that it's, while it's sitting there, it's gonna fit and it's gonna have mobility. All right, my wheels should be set up by now. Now we need to go back to the drawing board with the little glue. And we need to put just a tiny bit of glue right on the edges. Just a little bit though. And then some right across here. And you take this and you set it in there. Now this is after it's been sanded. And then you take that piece, that's the other C, and you push it on there just like that. At this point, your wagon should be able to move completely functional, up and down. We'll let that dry. And it should stay in there too. It shouldn't come out. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. If I were you and you do a lot of crafts with dollhouse furniture, I would keep these because they can come in handy for more than just this project. And I may not always include them in my project, so they may help you with when you're doing wheels and stuff like that because it works out great. Because as you can see, the wheels are fully functional. Now just to compare it in size, there's your penny. And these are the blocks. Plenty enough for a store, playroom, or whatever you have. Now I will tell you the K2 
cast acrylic blocks are a tiny bit smaller than these. They're the same width, like the same exact thing, but they're skinnier just by a tiny bit, just barely. I mean, they're an eighth inch thick, but the eighth inch of the cast acrylic, it measures differently. It's kind of like when you measure a two by four, it's really not two by four inches. So here you have it. And you can paint them any color you want. Here's one I started and I painted it red. And this was the first one before I decided to use that tool. As you can see, my wheels are too far out. So I didn't like that. I'm gonna go back and cut these off and I'm gonna print two more wheels so I can make this functionable. This was a prototype. And then this one I'll add in and um, it's actually already on my store for the little wagon, a block wagon. So you can go in there and get that now. And this one was a prototype as well. So if you like any of the prototypes and you think you'd like to see those in the shop too as well, just go ahead and leave a comment below. But for now, this is what I've done. And I will show you the cast acrylic ones because you might like those better. It's like cleaning up your kids' toys. They're everywhere. And like I said, there's over a hundred of these blocks that come with this set. So you'll have plenty of blocks if you wanna make a little shop with toys to put some in your wagon and also in your um, like toy boxes of like things you're selling. As you can see, the cast acrylic are smaller. It's the same amount of blocks in there as it is here, but they're way more colorful, so I like them. And they do cost me more because I have to buy the acrylic online um, and it's much more expensive than the wood, so it does cost a little bit more to choose the acrylic one. And the acrylic ones, you will need to remove the paper off of because they are coated. I'll show you one. Oops. Okay, so here they are here, and when you get it, you'll have to take this paper off, just like that. Now be careful when you're taking the paper off because you don't want your nails to actually chip the acrylic, because that can happen if you've got really sharp nails or whatever. But it's kind of cool. I like the cast acrylic personally. Um, but I also like the wooden blocks because it reminds me of the old wooden blocks in a preschool setting. That's it. Hopefully you like this tutorial and leave a question, suggestion, or comment below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.